Hello, everyone, and welcome to another riveting edition of HR Manifesto's Mailbag, where I share with all of you all the tragic work realities that my followers send and share with me. So this one, I have it up on my monitor right over here, uh, is a riveting story. Uh, they all are, right? They're all great in their own little ways. Uh, but this one is incredibly motivational and inspirational. And so I wanted to share it with you all in the hopes that it reaches the ears it needs to reach today, okay? So I do hope that this message uh, spurs some of you all uh, to action. All right, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. All right, let's dive in. Greetings. First, I want to say how much I enjoy your videos and the work that you do. It's really nice to see someone deal with work horror stories with candor, humor, and remind us to always demand respect or find someone else who will give it to us. Thank you so much. Uh, I have several stories, but I wanted to share one from a hotel group I once worked for. I was desperate for a job and had worked for this group of owners before and hated it the first time, but there weren't many openings in management in my area, so I got stuck working for them again. God, I hate that. Now, first off, I have not ever worked uh, in the travel industry or for a, for a hotel group. Uh, so I watch the Netflix. I've seen some crazy shows out there. I know some shit really goes down in hotels. I don't know that I'm built for it. Oh. At one point during my second series of unfortunate events, aka working for these people, <laughs> I was an assistant manager for a large hotel in my city and worked in the afternoon to manage any issues with guests and employees. Well, during one such night, we were near full at 97% occupancy with a few rooms left to arrive that night. Everything was running smoothly. Well, for the brand that these owners had franchised, if your hotel reaches 96% or above, minus any free rooms you give out, you get extra money for rooms booked under points. Typically, you get around $30 to $50 for these rooms, but at 96% occupancy, you get the average of what all the rooms check-in are paying. Well, the rules of this program said the hotel cannot check in rooms before they arrive and we could not make fake reservations. Makes sense, right? <laughs> this is considered fraud. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> As it's essentially lying to the franchise. Well, with the few complimentary rooms we had given out for various reasons and waiting on the last few arrivals, we ended the day at 95%. I bet you can feel where this is going. The next morning, I got a call from the largest of the three owners cursing and screaming at me and telling me I lost him $4,000 because I did not check in people that had not arrived or made fake reservations. <laughs> I explained to him I was not told this was what they wanted me to do. And from my past employer, a more corporate hotel, uh, this was a big no-no. He told me that if I ever let something like this happen again, he would fire me and make sure I would never work in this area again. For context, he owns 70% of the major hotels in my area and knows all the other owners. God, that's cruel as hell. He continued to curse and basically called me an idiot. After this, I felt horrible about myself and I felt like I failed and it really took a toll on my mental health. The company had no HR, of course, so I had no real options but to find a new job. It took me about six months before I finally quit without another job lined up, scared me to death. But I was lucky enough to get a job working for, from home, making the same money with amazing benefits and an employer that values and respects me. I often think about the people that get stuck working for this owner's group and how hard it can be emotionally to deal with them. And it really bothers me that people can treat others like this. I want people to know, even when it seems like you have no options, there are options that you may overlook at first glance. I know I never thought I would be considered for the job I have now. But if you keep an open mind, something is bound to turn up. I have more of these stories to share and a few about the best leader I have ever encountered too. Uh, but I just wanted to share this with you. Feel free to share it anonymously. And thank you again for being you sent with love. Gosh, what a great story. Uh, you know, the first thing that I want to touch upon uh, about this um, tragic work reality is the line where they say it took a toll on their mental health. 
Uh, gosh, it is so true that if you are in a toxic work environment, if you're working for a toxic leader, it actually, research says, it actually affects you in all ways, physically, mentally, emotionally, literally every way, uh, it, it affects you. If you're in a bad situation and, and you're always getting headaches or you can't sleep or you feel fatigued or you feel this or that, anxious, depressed, uh, not hungry, whatever the, whatever the symptom is, it's a symptom of a larger issue. And that may be the fact uh, that you are in an environment that's not conducive to health uh, or positivity the majority of your waking hours, right? Uh, so when you think about it that way, it's like, well, yeah, gosh, that makes sense then. Um, that I hurt inside, in my mind, in my soul, uh, because it just spreads like a poison. But we sometimes, you know, we're in a situation and it's like that adage, and I suck, I suck at adages, oh my gosh, about the, you know, the frog in the pot and the water's boiling and they're turning up the temperature slowly. Somebody drop it in the comments, what the hell that adage is. But you know, you know what I'm talking about, uh, that we get desensitized oftentimes um, to <clears throat> that, <laughs> that which we're experiencing, right? Especially if it's over time and long periods of time. Uh, it's hard for us we're in a, when we are in a situation uh, to recognize that the situation is no longer serving us in some ways. We totally become numb to it. Uh, it happens to us all. It happens to us in our relationships as well, right? Uh, with our friends and with our families. We don't realize sometimes that they're, that they're, that they're, that they're bad <laughs> or that we're suffering <laughs> because we grew up this way because it's all we've ever known, right? Uh, so the same can happen at work. And, and it's fascinating, and I've thought about this before, about how you know we have this concept, a very true, real reality for so many, of domestic violence. And it's tragic and it's heartbreaking, uh, but we really don't have the same for the workplace, right? <clears throat> we say violence in the workplace, but you know what I mean? It's like this abuse, this workplace abuse, this abuse that occurs uh, within the workplace um, because it's a very, very real thing. Uh, bullying from leaders, uh, leadership, folks that you are supposed to, you really are, you're supposed to be able to turn to for support, for answers, for help, uh, folks that you really should be able to trust, but so many of us don't and maybe won't ever trust our manager or leader, and that's a shame, right? Uh, because really, uh, we should, we should be able to. Um, but many times, oftentimes, I've experienced this multiple times. I've had three super toxic leaders. <laughs> uh, but uh, oftentimes, we, you know, those aren't folks that we can confide in, that we can lean on, that we can trust. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. So very, very true and very, very real that uh, it takes a significant toll on your total health working in a toxic work environment and for toxic leaders. Um, I love the messaging uh, in this email about sometimes it feels as though there's no options. And that's so true because again, you become desensitized, you become helpless, uh, helpless and you think that, gosh, there's no way out or this is just what it is, right? And you overlook that there are options and there are opportunities and that you can uh, go into activator mode and take action to get out of your bad situation. Um, there's many, many things you can do. Uh, you can network. You can reach out to others for support and help. Let that be the first thing you do if you just feel that low and helpless and lost, really, in the situation that you're in. Uh, reach out to others and share what you're experiencing. Again, a lot of times we keep it inside. We keep it within ourselves. Uh, but 
if you believe that, gosh, what, what I'm experiencing at work, I don't think it's right. It doesn't feel good. I know that. I've changed. Share those stories with what you're experiencing with others in your life, right? And let them kind of put the sniff test on it, right? Uh, let them kind of help you gauge whether this is normal or not. Because I bet that if you feel pained and you're already questioning, is this right? Should I be treated like this at work? Oh, is this a toxic work environment? Oh, if you're already having those questions, I would bet money that if you were to share some of these experiencing experiences that you're having with others, those trusted uh, family members and friends may be like, OMG, WTF? Oh, what are you doing? Gosh, we love you. We don't want you in that sort of environment. God, let's help to get you out of there. Right? So sometimes, again, we internalize so much. Uh, things gradually, gradually come to be. It's very, very rare that you start a new job and on your first day, your boss is like, hey, asshole. <laughs> right? And you're like, oh my God, what did I do? What sort of organization did I join? Oh. Typically, it happens slowly over time and maybe your toxic leader begins to gaslight you and makes you question yourself and your capabilities and they get you as low as they possibly can so that then they can exploit you and treat you bad. They try and get you into a place uh, where you can forget how amazing you are and how you deserve respect and dignity at all times. You deserve to be treated with respect and dignity at all times. And so they begin to beat you down a little bit more and more each day uh, to get you to a place where you forget uh, that you are worth a damn. And that's how they retain you in their organization. It's terrible. But you deserve more. You deserve better. And so if this email resonated with you, I hope it didn't. I really, really do, but I wanted to share it in the off chance that maybe it resonates with just one person out there that has a similar story like this, but without the happy ending. It's not too late for your happy ending. You know what I mean by that? God, you all are, you all are terrible. Uh, but it's not too late to have that fairy tale ending uh, here in your career and with the job that you're in now. If it sucks, Say it sucks. Say it sucks and be honest with the fact that it sucks so that you can be spurred to action to change your freaking reality. Call a spade a spade. I got that adage right. At least I got one today because I failed at another one earlier. But anyway, call a spade a spade because if you're not honest with yourself about what you're experiencing and how bad, at whatever level it comes in at, how bad it is, then you will never do anything about it. And you will continue to suffer needlessly. I believe in you. You believe in you. That's the most important thing. You believe in you. Care about your health, your total health. Because life is way too short to be putting up with this toxic bullshit in the workplace. It just is. You deserve more, you deserve better, you deserve to experience joy throughout your day and enjoy what you do. You honestly do, I promise you, you do. Mm, again, I hope this didn't resonate with anybody, uh, but in case it did, I wish you the best of luck. I absolutely do, you got this. Again, I believe in you, now you believe in you. Take care.